guest, Ron Champion here. He is an amazing kayak angler. He plays several first and second places in different local club events in 2014-15. He had big bass, the one you see behind him. And he caught a KBF in 2014. Sixth place at Kayak Bass Series in 2015. Fourth place, an amazing place for the Tournament of Champions in 2014. And then runner-up in the Tennessee State Championship 2015. And he placed third place in 2014. Welcome, Ron, to our interview. I appreciate it. Thank you, Spencer. Thank you so much for being here. Well, let's start off with the easy question. How did you get started in kayak fishing? Uh, well, uh, I had a good friend that uh, does it a lot, and uh, everybody pretty much knows uh, who he is in the kayak world. Uh, my, one of my best friends, Chad Hoover, actually got me started in, uh, in kayak fishing. Um, I came over from the bass boat side. He had uh, told me that I was missing out. Uh, the sport was growing tournaments were uh, growing fast and me being a tournament angler uh, it's like yeah I'll give it a shot and uh, that's uh, that's how I got started about three years ago. That's excellent so do you still have a bass boat that you fish out of or did you leave that world behind for kayak fishing? I still have a bass boat but uh, it's not been in the water in two years <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I pretty much strictly I'm in the plastic boats now so that's great man. Well, what lesson would you like to teach people or have people learn right away? Or what did you learn right away in this sport? Oh, man. Uh, what did I learn? Um, probably uh, the, how bad the addiction is. Um, <laughs> once you get into uh, kayak fishing, uh, if, if I knew how bad it was, uh, I don't know if I would have started. Uh, you you get one boat and, and then one boat turns into two and then three and then you spend all day like I did today building a rack to hold the fourth one. So uh, it's uh, it's uh, the addiction uh, is uh, it's it's bad. <laughs> That's crazy, man. I, I know for me, just that first fish that I caught, even a little thing or even uh, a flounder that's pulling the kayak, it, it sets the addiction in and makes it that much more enjoyable. Yeah, it just, um, you're, you're so in tune with uh, nature and the surroundings, and it's just, uh, it, it's different. I mean, it's different than any type of fishing. I mean, I've fished my whole life, but um, I, I love uh, being in a kayak. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't think I'll ever, not saying I wouldn't ever fish another bass boat tournament, but uh, I'm, uh, I'm made up with, uh, with the plastic boats. That's excellent, man. Well, this next question might be an easy one, given what's in the background there, but what is your favorite species to fish for? Yeah, it would have to be the largemouth bass. Um, I grew up on a, uh, on a deep, clear lake, so smallmouth fishing was uh, really the main way that, uh, that I, I grew up. Um, I mean, we had a we had decent largemouth lake um, close by, but grew up catching the, uh, those brown fish. And um, if you can catch fish in deep, clear water, these guys are easy to catch and stay in the <laughs> shallow water. So um, uh, it's definitely would be the largemouth bass for sure. That's excellent, man. Well, given that you just started the sport, not just, but a couple of years ago, what is one of the most important safety tips you can offer any kayak anglers, new or experienced? Oh, um, I mean, it has to be, has to be where your PFD I mean that's that's the you hear it's it's sad to say you hear it uh, almost uh, at monthly you hear of somebody losing their life uh, with it, and and it doesn't take you no know, moving water it doesn't take you no know, fast flowing I mean it it can happen on a reservoir it can happen on a pond um, where your PFD I I'm a big guy I'm 6'4", 295 pounds I mean I sweat it's hot out there and I still wear my my, my life jacket I. I want to make for sure that uh, that I'm coming home to my family, uh, to my wife and my kids at the end of the day. So always wear your PFD. It don't get too hot, hot enough to not wear your PFD. I I completely agree. I don't care if it's an uncomfortable one, at least wear it. But the best way to go is get the most comfortable one you can afford at the time so that you will wear it and you can come home to your family later on. That's correct. All right. Well, we'll switch gears a little bit now. Imagine you could do anything you want. What is your dream kayak fishing trip? Dream. Um, well, I know what it used to be. 
Uh, my dream was used to was to go to Lake Fork uh, and uh, and fish, and uh, I got to go to the Tournament of Champions two years ago, as you mentioned earlier, and uh, had a good tournament down there, got fourth in that tournament, and that was my dream was to go to Lake Fork uh, from the time I was a kid, and uh, I got to go um, two years ago, and then went back this past year, and I'll be going back again this year. So uh, Lake Fork was always a dream lake for me to go fish and. Uh, um, we're, I'm, we're, I'm, we're lucky, um, where I grew up in the South, we have people come from all over the world to fish Lake Gunnersville, fish Chickamauga. I mean, so we have great lakes here that, that are dream lakes for people. And mine was to always go to Lake Fork cause I grew up fishing those other lakes. So, but yeah, you know, Lake Fork's probably, that, that was my dream. And I made that happen a couple of years ago for the first time. That's fantastic, man. Great job making that dream come true. What is your next planned big adventure for you? That'll start next month. Um, um, the KBS series starts up um, our first tournaments on the St. Johns River. Uh, I've never fished that body of water, so it'll be a new experience. And I mean, it's a mega bass lake uh, full of giant largemouth. So hopefully, I can go down there and catch one bigger than this one. But um, that's uh, that's the next uh, that's the next trip. Uh, uh, February the twentieth, twenty first, somewhere around there. It's the that's toward the end of February. We start out on the St. John, so that's the next destination. Very nice. Are you planning on following the series as well, going to oh, the yeah. tournaments wherever they are? Oh yeah. Um, uh, last year we had six tournaments. Uh, I fished three of them. Went to the Classic on Gunnersville. Actually came in eleventh place in the Classic. Okay. Um, almost, I had a mishap. It cost me the top ten. Uh, and then fishing the third day, which was uh, my my fault, but uh, but yeah, uh, I'll be fishing the the whole trail for 2000, uh, uh, 2016. Uh, they have two divisions, have a north division and a south division. Um, so I plan on plan on fishing at least three um, tournaments uh, in the south division. Uh, might get uh, might get a fourth one in um, if I go up north or something, but I'll be following that whole trail. Well, you're always welcome up here by me, and you can fish with me anytime you want. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. I take, might take you up on that. There's some north events uh, that, uh, and I've not, if it's past uh, Kentucky, uh, I've not been, I've not fished any of that water way up north, so I'd like to get up there and do some. I'd love to make that happen, man. Well, okay, given your success with the tournaments and with, obviously, your amazing catch behind you, what is your number one fishing-specific tip you can offer anglers? Uh, I'd say don't leave fish to go find fish. I see so many guys that they'll be on the spot and they'll catch a fish, and then five minutes later they're they're paddling away from it, going somewhere else. And uh, um, that fish is usually that if you catch a fish in a spot, he's there for a reason. Whether it be structure, whether it be um, food. So if there's one there, most of the time there there's there's two or three. He's got some buddies with him. They're there for a reason. So uh, don't uh, don't be afraid to set on a spot for a while. Um, I'm I'm known for it. I, I had a tournament last year. I sat on one brush pile for eight hours in a tournament. Never left it. Eight hours fished one brush pile that was about the uh, probably about thirty yards wide, um, and uh, and I caught probably 25 fish out of that, that one brush pile. I never left it. There was no need to. So, yeah, don't uh, don't don't leave fish to go find fish would be my That's thing. That's a great tip. That's excellent. I know I struggle with it. I'm more of a power fisherman. You know, fish the shorelines or brush piles, you hit it a couple times and move on really quick. But right. you know, you're right. If there's that fish, works. Why move? Yeah, that, that works for some people. You know, I mean, it, it's running and gunning. I mean, but uh, um, with kayak fishing, it, you're – you're known to have to slow down anyway. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just um, I, I, I'm i not scared to set on, uh, set on a spot for a while. And because uh, most tournaments, I mean, are, are usually start out with three fish or it's five fish. You know, one brush pile can hold a lot of fish, you know, or one one ditch or one one drop off, one ledge. So, yeah, that's uh, yeah, that'd be my, my tip. Uh, don't leave fish to go find fish. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well, all right. You moved recently. I believe you're now in Georgia. Is that correct? I am. I am. 
All right, so leaving your, your home water a little bit, and now being closer at least to salt water, are there any salt water tournaments or fishing in your future? Probably. Uh, I've got some really good friends uh, on this area all the way down into uh, – I live, I live just outside of Savannah, Georgia now. So uh, uh, really, uh, really good fishing down here. Um, just a couple hours away from Jacksonville, Florida, I got a good friend down there that does a lot of salt water, uh, uh, really well known. And so, uh, I, yes, uh, I, I'd, I'd say yeah, eventually, but I've got a lot to learn. I mean, I'm, I'm not a salt guy. I've, I've, uh, I went out two weeks ago for the first time for about four hours and I zeroed. <laughs> I, didn't, I mean, I didn't do no good. So, uh, I've got a lot to learn. But, uh, that's okay. You know, maybe I'd, I don't know, maybe not this year. But uh, in the future, I'd love to. I'd love to do some saltwater events. Um, but I, I don't want to go out there and have my, my my rear handed to me the first time I go. So I'd like to catch something. So I need to learn a little bit first. I can. I completely understand, man. I know for me, the couple times I was out uh, fishing saltwater, it was I had friends with me helping guide me the whole way. Because otherwise, I would just be a complete zero. Uh, well, that's that's me. I I have no idea. I, I I was calling buddies. I was like, man, I'm moving here. What do I need to buy? And, uh, and everybody said a lot of your bass tackle will work for redfish and trout and stuff. Right. So, uh, but, uh, I mean, I, I just use that as an excuse to go buy a new tackle. I told my wife, I was like, it's like I got to have saltwater stuff. So, so I got to go to Bass Pro and spend some money. That's a perfect excuse. Well, because of your recent move, what is the biggest challenge you've had? I know it's winter and all, but what's the biggest challenge you've had now in the new state and new surroundings? Uh, well, down here, there, there's, there's not a lot of reservoirs. Uh, you have, a there's, there's a lot of moving water. So trying to, trying to find the right places to go, uh, to go bass fish. Uh, there, um, Georgia, South Georgia is known for ponds, small lakes. Um, I went out and had to call, call some fish in some, some local waters, local ponds and stuff. But, uh, uh, I've got to, uh, I've got to venture out, but, but I, we're, we're in a good spot. I mean, I, I'm a, I'm a two hour drive from Santee Cooper in South Carolina, which is where I caught that fish. Nice. Um, and then I, you know, I'm two and a half hours from the St. John's, um, uh, down in Florida. So, so I'm right in the middle of where I need to be to two really big bass fisheries. So I've just got to, I've got to venture out, but we've only been here about two months. So, um, this summer, uh, my wife might not see me a lot. I'm going to be trout. I'm going to be gone. Nice. Nice. All right. Last question of the night for you. If you were stranded on an island, we'll say fresh water around you just for your sake, you have one lure and one choice of kayak. What are they and why? Uh, one lure. Um, I probably have to go old school, something that I grew up fishing, you know, my whole life and We'll catch anything you throw, and that's probably just a smoke colored grub. Um, you can you can take that bait out there; it's the most natural looking thing uh, you can fish, and you'll catch anything from panfish to to bass to crappie, every, anything that swims. And if I'm stranded on an island, I'm going to be hungry. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big guy, so I'm going to want to eat something. So I'm going to throw something that will that everything will want to, to eat. So uh, it'd be a, probably a smoke colored grub. I still throw it today. I, I have a tackle box full of That's fantastic. And what kayak would you have out there collecting your dinner? <laughs> oh, I, I'd definitely be in my hobby. <laughs> I've got a VA 14. That's uh, I'm spoiled now uh, with that boat, um, but that's definitely my boat of choice for sure. That's fantastic, man. Well, I really appreciate you giving us the time and helping with the answers and all that. And I wish you the best of luck with all your tournaments this season and for the rest of fishing to come. And come on up here anytime. You're more than welcome. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And uh, uh, I look forward to uh, sharing some water with you soon. Sounds great. Have a great night. You too. See you.